Hey, I'm Stephanie Yang Ponen with The Nocturnal, and I'm here with actress, singer, and songwriter Jihei. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. You just released some new music. The music video for Utopia is absolutely stunning. Tell me what inspired you to write a song like that. Um, well, you know, Sam Cooke wrote a protest song for the civil rights movement back in the day, and, and um, for me, Utopia is my protest against hate and, and kind of a non-protest kind of form because it's really just a message about love and unity. And instead of, you know, I think all of us who are going through this um, threat of violence against us for being Asian for absolutely no reason, truly, and a nonsensical hate crimes that are being, that are happening all over the world, you know, it, it's almost inevitable that we feel anger towards this nonsensical violence that's directed towards us. Um, and of course there, there's anguish, there's um, a lot of different base emotions that we feel that we can't help but feel it, you know, but when we think about how we can combat something like a virus like hate, you know, because it is spreading, it has been spreading. You can't meet hate head on with hate or with anger. You have to meet it with something that's the opposing force, which is more powerful, which is love. And my, my effort to, you know, find inner peace mirrored my effort to want to do something like this. And, you know, I devoted a whole year to try to make an uplifting song out of Utopia because it, you know, I was sketching what was going on and it was not uplifting. <laughs> um, but I found a way and in that process, um, I was able to express something that was heartfelt and honest and, and true to meaning of what I believe can shift this dark negativity pendulum and swing it back forth towards more positive, more light-filled world. I think Utopia sends a very strong message. It's a beautiful song and it's been a very tough year um, for the Asian American community. So I do appreciate you putting out music like this because when I felt when I first listened to it, I felt very carefree and your voice is so beautiful. Um, I, I wanna talk a little bit about the production behind the music video. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Um, Paula Kodaki is an incredible photographer and director. And she and I have collaborated a few times before. We've done some photo shoots together. And I always admired her ability to capture the raw moments of, of her subjects. And she's photographed everyone from Angelina Jolie to uh, Hugh Jackman to um, so Vanessa Williams. I mean, you name it, she's photographed them. And I, um, it was a great opportunity because she was also um, living near where I am and, and we, talk to each other and we're like yes let's do this and we went back and forth multiple facetimes discussing concept discussing the meaning and um we got an incredible dp who was a cinematographer for uh, han solo the star wars story who's also a korean american and uh brought together an incredible team um curated by mark elliott who's a producer on the music video. And it was a 5 a.m. call for me and, and we were done at 8 p.m. And it was one of the most smooth, free flowing, not a single issue, just it just flowed from one part to the next in such a beautiful way. And um, it was a really wonderful production experience, a rare one. It was amazing. Um, I loved watching it. Um, I love just being like outdoors and stuff like that. And I really feel like you portrayed um, just a strong message, like I said before. Um, is there, what inspired you to get into singing at, at first? Well, funny enough, what inspired me was 
to, to con, you know, take this on as a profession was when everyone said I shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's like that stubborn onks in me. That's like, oh, you think I can't do it? I mean, basically, I grew up in a musical family. My grandmother, who passed before I was born, who my mom just tears up talking about her all the time. She was, she looks a lot like me, or I look a lot like her. I mean, and she was a very modern woman and a very talented woman. And, she, and you know, her dream was to become an opera singer. And she, it was rare for her to be in college at that time. And she made arrangements to go study opera and her father was against it. And then once my mom had us three girls and I being the youngest, um, she thought, oh, wow, well, she's got the voice in the family. Maybe she could fulfill my, and my mom's dream was in her mind. But, you know, it was something, something like opera, like classical music, classical vocal music. One has to train for many years and, and really stick to that program. Um, and I didn't do that and I didn't get to do that. Um, but then my interests were more contemporary anyway. So, you know, I grew up singing in church. I grew up singing at diplomatic receptions and, you know, like a whole musical thing was part of my life. And then um, when I, once I moved to New York, I, I had a roommate who was in a band and she asked me to join her band we went to London to do that, but we ended up not doing it together. And I just started writing on my own and um, writing melodies and picking up the guitar. And that's how it all started. I think that's truly inspiring. I think also I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, oh, you don't think I can do it? Then you just like go and prove them wrong. <laughs> so I think, exactly. that's, I think that's kind of like the best energy to get. It's like, you know, um, just to prove people wrong. And, right. you know, and here you are and you're creating amazing music that's inspiring people. Um, I wanted to ask also, is there any artists that you look up to? Oh, plenty. Um, and a lot of them have deceased. But I mean, I really, really admire uh, Leonard Cohen, who's my songwriting hero. David Bowie, Nina Simone, Jim, you know, The Doors, Jim Morrison. I mean, all, to me, the people that really transcended beyond music were living at that time. And today there's really a wonderful, amazing artists, you know. I. I really love Billie Eilish and what she's doing. Um, FKA Twigs is great. You know, she's so unique and just so true to whatever she is channeling. <laughs> um, St. Vincent, um, who else do I dig? Uh, you know, I mean, Dave Harrington with the dark side, he's got his own personal projects as well. And he's, he's a phenomenal, prolific artist as well. And I, I was lucky to work with him. I'm glad you mentioned FKA Twigs because I absolutely love them as well. Yeah, she's yeah her voice is beautiful and very mm. unique and it's very mm. hard to come by um, sometimes. Um, yeah. I wanna talk about your acting career now. Um, I interviewed yeah. the cast of Netflix's Altered Carbon. And I love that you sang on the show with that beautiful gold outfit. <laughs> and now you're prepping to do season three of HBO Succession. How is it working with the cast members and being on that kind of production? Well, I actually started shooting December. Um, and it's been six months. And actually tonight is my last day on the shoot. And um, it's been really amazing, actually. Because, well, first of all, what a what a brilliant show! Um, I can't really say that there is a better written show than Success. <laughs> better written show than Succession. <laughs> tongue twister. I had tongue um, twister <laughs> <laughs> on TV today. There really isn't uh, that the the quality of writing is so brilliant. I'm just to me, writing is everything, you know, for me to choose to do something, to devote my time and my life to do something, 
the writing has to be fantastic. Otherwise, you know, I prioritize that over anything else. And so it's really a privilege to work on a project where the writing is stellar. And, you know, the each character development and each line, the, the, the triple, quadruple meanings on each line of a dialogue is just like, yeah, I'm blown up by it, by it and I, I am learning so much because every cast members, members on set are truly masters of their craft and they really embody their character. So, I mean, I'm exchanging molecules with the best of the best and I'm, I feel really lucky to be a part of it. I'm obsessed with this series. I think it's kind of like a modern day Game of Thrones and I'm just so excited to see the next season. And that's awesome that you're, yeah. you get to be a part of it. And I'll definitely be looking out, you know, for your role and be like, oh my gosh, you talked to her. <laughs> <laughs> so best of luck with that. Um, last question that I have, um, we talked about the Asian American um, culture and it is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Is there a mm -hmm. message you'd like to give to aspiring Asian American artists? <sighs> yeah, sure. I mean, I think the most important key message I would like to deliver is that always believe in yourself. Don't ever let other people tell you who you are because if they don't recognize it, prove them, prove it to them, you know, like they will one day when you persisted and through your resilience, you, you come through, you know, I don't think I don't think anyone, any artist should ever rely on a person saying no to them or a person giving them um, an opinion about who they think you are or, you, or who you, they think you should be and taking that into your, your life decision-making. I think every artist should have in their core the knowledge of who they are and what they can contribute to the world. And, and I think it's an important path to take and um you know i encourage every young artist to just keep pursuing their dreams well thank you for your inspiring words and your time i want to see if do you have any other projects that we can that we can look forward to that you're working on if, that you'd like yeah. to chat about sure um i'm working on a indie film project and we're in development uh, the script's been written and it's it's going to be, it's written and directed, it's going to be, it has been written by Amos Poe and it will be directed by Amos Poe, who directed the uh, Blank Generation back in the day. Um, and it's a, it's called That Reptilian Night. It's a suspense drama. And we have um, Harold Torres from 000 um, confirmed to play one of the leading roles and I'm, I'm playing the FBI agent, which is the other leading role. And then we also have um, Anthony Edwards um, also confirmed to play the villain. And so we're very excited to get it moving. I'm helping executive produce it. And um, we're hoping to go, go into production um, before the end of the year. That's amazing. I'll definitely be looking out for that. Thank you so yes. much for your time. I'm sure you have a very busy schedule being an actress, singer, and songwriter. Um, again, you're truly inspiring. I can't say it enough. Thank, Thank you, you again. So. And hope to see you soon or chat with you soon. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure to meet you.